I'm Heather. I'm Nate. And, and this, this is Lacey. Lacey. We're going to the L.A. Time Festival of Books. It's at the University of Southern California. They're going to talk to the author of The Last Thing He Told Me, and they brought Jennifer Garner along. It was really crowded, but we thought we'd give you a peek of what we saw, and they started with showing us a trailer to the show. Welcome. For those of you who haven't been here, this is the L.A. Times main stage. My name is Stuart K. Robinson. I'll be your host here all weekend. Uh, I assume you're here because you know something very special is about to happen. Are you aware? Thing he told me. What defines you? What defines you? I ask first. There's nothing I wouldn't do for my daughter. Wow, welcome to the room. stepdaughter are faced with the heartbreak of a missing husband slash father who leaves in his wake only a mysterious note to protect her and no other instructions. If you guys are writers out here, but if you are, Laura wrote a really beautiful piece for what? Well, I'm a reader and I still um, read to my kids. I have 11, 14. An unlikely bedtime tale. Um, but you know, it's not that far from the grim fairy tales, right? I mean, it's a little scary, a little dragon. Um, man, something to dive into. But somebody else was attached and I just didn't even think of it. Because um, someone else was Julia Roberts. Let's face facts. It's not like, uh, like I'm going to take on Julia Roberts. Um, respect. Anyway, um, when scheduling snafus got in her way, I kind of went bananas and um, just stayed up all night and tried to write one good literate letter to um, the head of Apple and uh, kind of sprinkled a couple around town and eventually they just, I think we're just like, oh, let's give it to the girl. What are we going to do? She's so annoying. But that's, that's how I came to it. And then I read it. Um, I, I just, I felt like I've never had rich, more rich source material in my life. And um, sorry, Shakespeare, but <laughs> I went back to the book over and over and over again. And honestly, the words would play in a refrain in my head as I was silent in the scene. Like um, the scene where I have just made the pasta from Poggio and Bailey goes storming out. Every time she walked out, I would think, and she's left with enough burnt pasta for a family in town. I can just remember that with every single take. And I don't know if it gave me anything, but it gave me something personally, just joy of seeing, you know, getting to play out words that I was so en enraptured with. And as we were saying, like at the end of each chapter, there's something to twist, and oh my gosh, this is gonna go someplace totally different. Your process as a writer, when you're going into it, like are you an outliner, or do you know where you're going? No, she doesn't. <laughs> she says writing a novel is like driving a car at night. You have to see, you can see it as far as your headlights, but you don't have to see further than that. How many things did you have the note say before you settled on protect her? It was always protect her. That's oh, so crazy. Wow. Yeah. Laura, that's always wild. Protect her. Wow. Okay, all right, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can follow that up. Uh, spotlight and post and first man and West oh. Wing and all the, you know, he's amazing. Uh, so the two of them together are a pretty dynamic duo mm -hmm. and they were the mom encouragement, comfort, stability, challenge, but overall, they both offered, this is your role, what are you gonna make of it, and let's co-create from here on. She's a great actress, and I would be saying this, and have continuously said this, when she's not sitting right next to me. She is such a great leader and partner that to be able to work together, it was joyful. I mean, it truly was, every step of the way. She was the most excited, the most exuberant. Well, I do have teenagers, and the difference is my teenagers are mine, so their surliness I've earned. <laughs> I put it there, um, and 
it is really short lived and they're really pretty sparkly and adorable most of the time, um, by far. Bailey is mean. <laughs> Bailey is like, really, she has this person who's entered her life that she doesn't want. She is a victim of this circumstance. And Hannah never expected to be a mom, didn't have a mom, knows nothing about being a mom, is clunky as hell. And just steps in it over and over and over again. So it's the hard thing for me was not playing it like they're my own teenagers who need a joke and a cuddle and a, or you know, or a slowly step away. But but like to play it as someone who doesn't know how to deal with the child in front. Oh, I can't wait to watch that. That's gonna be so good. Thanks, Thanks for going, going with us to see Jennifer Garner. Garner.